Today, I'm at the University of Newcastle and I'm gonna be giving my talk to a whole bunch of students here in the Brennan Room. Oh, can't zoom on there. I need a better phone. I'm just about to go on stage. Got a few people there ra waiting and ready. I've also got an Auslan interpreter, which I've never had before. So I've got to watch how fast I speak. Thank you. But what happened is I had to manage all day, every day to redirect those ticks. In fact, there's one I still do now. I used to bang my knees together. Okay? I'd leave a massive bruise. I didn't want to do that. So I would sit now, I'd explore the sensation of what is it that I'm feeling, and I want the sensation of the feeling between my legs and my groin whacking my legs together. So now, I put my elbow against my knee and my palm like a straight pole, and I push in. And that gets that same satisfaction, so I stop hurting myself. Now what happened after that acceptance journey of really accepting who I was, stop pretending I was someone else. Like for example, I hate sport, right? I don't like it, I don't like watching it, I don't like playing it. And so when my mates would be like, you see the game? I'm like, oh yeah, that was, oh, that was a kick. Oh, that ref, they need to go to prison. <laughs> but I was embarrassed of my likes and dislikes, but through that acceptance journey, I started really embracing it, leaning into what I was passionate about, what I liked and what I didn't, and I started becoming confident, more and more confident. And what happened after exploring my likes and dislikes, I discovered a passion. Now this was what I really wanted out of life. I loved television, but I realized after this journey, my real passion was radio. I wanted to be the next Kyle Sanderlands. So I decided to take a leap of faith. After seven years, I thought, you know what? I am going to move to Melbourne and I'm going to be the next big thing on breakfast radio. Now this is very important that I tell you this. I was on television for seven years from the age of 18 to 25. My ego was massive. <laughs> I was so arrogant and confident. I thought I didn't have to line up to nightclubs, people taking photos of me, autographs. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'll get a job, no worries. I've been on television, I'll get a job easy on Breakfast Radio. <laughs> Guess what happened when I went to Melbourne? Nobody cared. <laughs> and for the first time, I experienced professional rejection and this giant inflatable ego deflated like a balloon and I sunk into a horrible depression. I had to learn something called resilience. Resilience is your ability to get back to square one after a knockback, to get back up after being pushed down, to get back to normal after a difficult period. And so I had to learn that and I had to do everything in my power to improve my mental health. The first thing I did is I went to see a psychologist. I think everybody, at some point, if you're struggling, you need to see a psychologist. The best way it was explained to me is seeing a psychologist, it doesn't mean you're suicidal. Just the same way as if you go to a GP, it doesn't mean you have cancer. It just means you have a cold. It's the same way. If you're struggling with something, you see a psychologist, they're going to equip you with tools to be able to deal with it. University of Newcastle, we're going to turn a floor into a... Superhouse! Oh, that was weak. I need it louder. I need more enthusiasm. We're going to turn a floor into a... Just finished up. <sighs> Just finished up at a University of Newcastle. This was a really good talk. There was such a mix of age groups, and some were lecturers, some were people who worked at the uni, um, some were students, and a lot of them had their own challenges and their own conditions that they were dealing with. And it was a really emotional talk. It was great. There was something in the room where I could sense there was uh, a lot of emotion, and it was really really ramming home from a lot, for a lot of people, which I really enjoyed. Every time I talk about Tourette's, every time I give my talk, my ticks skyrocket. I've made it down here to Sydney. I'm here at DY Beach and look at how beautiful it is. Oh, the surfers are out there. One of the reasons why I love being a part of the Tourette Syndrome community and spreading awareness and trying to inject some, I guess, inspiration into some of these kids because a lot of them, they don't go to school because they're ostracized socially, they're too embarrassed to have Tourette Syndrome and they feel really uncomfortable a lot of the times in social situations. 
And nothing breaks my heart more than hearing people not living up to their full potential because of their condition or because whatever the cards that life has thrown at them. And I hate the idea of someone capping you, capping what you're capable of because of something you were born with or something that happened to you. So I really get a lot out of inspiring these kids to feel more confident about themselves, relinquish all of that social embarrassment and just go for whatever it is that they want in life. And that's really my aim here at Tretzkin, at Tretzkin and Camp in New South Wales.